saturated with color hey guys welcome back to the channel a different type of video this time as the title says a review of the uh, of the camera on the uh, realme 6s this this video is going to be going through an article on the drive tune website if you just want to read the article link is in the video description this is just going to look at the uh, camera as a uh, picture taker a bit of background on the camera it's uh, a budget camera definitely the realme 6s it's uh, it cost me around 180 dollars i'm going to compare it the photos in the test i'm going to compare it to a budget camera and to a relatively high-end compact camera and i've put links in the article as well if you want to get these uh you want to get your phone your 6s on the ebay uh there's links here that will take you to listings on ebay so what did i do uh basically i took three photos of the same thing but with the three different cameras uh the budget camera is something called a doogie mix light it's um for the for the money i thought the camera i thought the phone was absolutely excellent i mean it only costs a hundred dollars can't get the phone any, anymore unfortunately but i've put it in here just to give you a comparison and the compact camera that we comparing it against was an uh fujifilm f770 exr when that was new that camera was around 400 dollars but the camera's around uh, eight nine years old now so in regards to the camera settings all the pictures were taken with just the automatic settings the settings that as they come uh, out of the box the files that i've put on the website they are the raw files but they have been compressed to 95 percent of their original size i don't think that's really uh, noticeable so the first thing i've got here is a, a slideshow which just shows a quick sample of some comparison photos and um, basically at the bottom right hand corner you can see that the uh, the camera model and also the settings that the camera chose to take the photo with again these are the auto settings and not settings i set so generally speaking the the real me really impresses um generally you can say that it is but even it is better than the budget phone definitely as was be as would be expected i suppose but it is also better than the um than the fuji film and a lot of shots so let's get into the depth of the uh, of the review here uh, one of the standout features of the 6s is the how how quickly it it finds focus uh like the fuji film can take a while it can be a bit fussy finding focus um the doogie again that can be a bit fussy uh, but the uh, the real me is you know honestly you just point and you shoot it gets the focus really quick and it seems to get the settings you know uh, right as well so the first photo we've got here is of some berries uh, so let's have a I'll open these up to the uh, the size of the monitor and we can see uh, the difference between the shots so this was very low light when this photo was taken and you can see that the mixed light really struggles with it like I said, you would expect it. it. So you can see it's just generally not very sharp. Uh, it's a bit blurry. You can see the ISO doesn't help. 1350. This is a real me. Actually, it uses a 1362 ISO, which is very close. But you can tell it's just much better focus, much sharper. You know, it's a it's a different. You know, it's a completely different uh, different experience. A much much better camera. And then if we compare that to the uh, dedicated camera, the Fuji Film. Uh, the Fujifilm makes the most out of the light. Um, it has an 800 ISO, which is a bit uh, bet better. Should have a bit more detail. I'd say that the uh, that the Realme beats the beats the Fujifilm. Uh, next photo was looking at a phone box, and again, so this is again the mixed light. Again, high ISO, uh, relatively blurred. If we compare that to the Realme, again, super high ISO, but still manages to retain some. Uh, some sharpness you know it's definitely more going on it's definitely you know it's just a huge difference huge huge difference between the budget one i mean there's so much more detail in it and then if we come to the uh, fuji you know it just does such a m much better job look i'm not saying that the fuji film couldn't get as good a shot as the real me but maybe you'd have to uh, do you know manually set the uh, set the exposures and what have you me personally when i use the phone i just want to take it out of my pocket shoot what i want to shoot and i want it to look good so we come into a long distance shot here this is looking across the water to the city at the other side so again the real me this is one of its better aspects actually is you know the landscape shots you can see it's, it's relatively clear and it, it doesn't look too bad at all you know when you zoom in you can see that it doesn't really have much detail in the city but the water comes out lovely but the real me you know it just gets so much more detail and then the fuji 
again probably not the best photo but again I, this just shows you know you have to be careful that it has, it's got the focus before you take the photo so again something just took it out of my pocket shot looked okay at the time but you know after the fact you can see that maybe it wasn't so great again the real me uh, beats them both easily um saturation it, look it does come across slightly oversaturated the success i mean it is you know artificially vibrant you know you know it's n the, the reality is not quite as saturated with color as this look it's not overblown by any stretch but you can tell that maybe it's not quite natural customized to your taste but for out of the box i think it's you know it's perfectly usable and perfectly acceptable um so dealing with dark and light so in this shot uh we've got a bright background and we've got a dark foreground let's see how wrong or right these cameras can get it the, again the big thing with this is that they both took the fujifilm and the mix light took a little bit of time to get things focused whereas the 6ns just took it out of the pocket shoot and it you know is very fast so you can see that the clouds here completely no detail at all it's a bit blown out the foreground looks okay though uh, arguably the mid ground you know looks half decent as well uh, but you can see the extra detail that you get the extra definition of the grass that you get in the real me is much better the uh, the mid ground again much better maybe not as realistic it is a bit saturated a bit coarse if you like you know arguably the mix like there's a a more natural job here in the in the medium uh, in the medium ground uh, let's have a look what settings they were so only 101 from the real me actually and the, the mix light you know 126 so they're both very close on that but you know it was a challenge in um, background the clouds so maybe the uh, the sacrifice that we make here you know it gets it gets it back in the sky you know we can actually see the clouds in the in the real me photo whereas it's completely blown out in the uh, mixed light photo but you know this is argu arguably nicer but let's go down and here we've got a green car against a relatively bland background so we're saying about the coarseness of the real me um, but you can see you know what you get for it I mean there's so much more definition here the bricks are much clearer the uh, the concrete has got much more going on compared to the uh, mixed light um, but everything is much sharper a little bit more saturated in the real me and then in the Fuji film you know it's um, not as uh, sharp but you can see what the real me is doing about when I'm when I talk about the saturation and the contrast the sharpness you could argue that it's a bit over the top again it's a bit grainy but you know it's it's a it's not bad and it's you know it's a perfectly usable photo and coming down to again we come a night shot here of a bush under a street lamp so this is a bit of a difficult photo because it is dark we've got a street lamp above us and we've got this light in the background so again the cheap camera the mixed light you know it suffers uh, not very good definition it, it's still arguably a usable photo the real me i mean just look at the difference i mean it really picks up the light that's coming from above us and arguably it looks like a half decent photo you know and even even zooming in it looks nice yeah in my opinion and then you come to the fuji film it looks it looks okay from a distance but you can see that this is so much nicer the real me but generally the the leaves on the uh, the light off the leaves looks much better in the in the real me here we've got a very tough shot of a balcony you can tell it's twilight this, these cam these photos are all taken at the same time it's a bit of a conundrum for the lens here you know this is very bright against a very dark background but I say the mix light does an okay job it just mix misses the sharpness it is pretty accurate to what you were looking at but the real me it just you know it just lightens everything up and it definitely makes the balcony look brighter than what it was is it artificial um, if I hadn't shown you that photo, maybe you think, you know, this was uh, actually real life. The real me does do quite a bit of image manipulation, but arguably it's not in a bad way. And then if we look at the Fuji film, again, it's very dark. Um, you know, it really does lack the uh, the low light performance compared to the uh, real me. Yeah? For me, the, the real me is the clear winner. So this is, again, dark light, just 
a close-up of a uh, conifer bush here so we can see mixed light looks dark uh, the real me yeah looks nice I mean this is taken in the same light guys yeah these two you wouldn't realize it yeah and then the F Fuji film this Fuji film looks nice and natural here it arguably looks more natural than the real me but if we s zoom in you can see how much more detail how much more defined they are in the real me even though perhaps it's not 100 percent natural you know it's not a bad photo guys yeah and there is definitely more detail in the real me and again this is this is a 150 euro 180 dollar camera phone and this is a uh, used to be a 400 dollar compact camera you know the photos on it are i would say in the ballpark you know that was my biggest concern before i bought the real me is is it worth 150 is it worth 180 180 dollars 155 euro i paid for it and my conundrum was do i get is it better to get like a budget get a used uh compact camera from like six years ago and then just get a, a budget phone for something you know less than 100 is that the best way to get the best photos in the end i ended up doing both i got the uh, fuji film used and I got the 160 euro uh, camera and as it turns out I think in hindsight I would say that the you know the mobile phone 160 euro well this specific one anyway the realme 6s does an, and does an amazing job the only thing that they don't do is for zoom you know so we come back to another dark shot here another arguably difficult shot with a bright light in the middle and the darkness all around it sharpness it looks okay i mean if you're comparing it to anything else when you zoom in you can see it's not particularly detailed but the real me you wouldn't know that this was not reality and arguably it makes makes it look nicer than what it actually was you know you, it even picks up the color of the uh, of the roses in the background and if we zoom in you know it's got great detail even right next to the light you know it's a, it's a super photo for what it is and then we come on to the fuji film and again you can just see you know maybe a bit more natural what what i was actually looking at but as a photo i think the real me you know nails it it looks much nicer this is obviously a nivea can on a on the bathroom counter extremely well lit you know mix like does an excellent job real me does an even better job and the fuji film does an okay job i think you can see that the main difference is the uh, the realme 6s picks up the countertop you know you can feel you can see the textures in it and the colors in it much better can itself again you can see it's a bit of a blurred edge the realme you know super super definite super defined um you know and even the uh, the the fuji's a bit you know a bit soft edges so again the Nivea, the uh, the real miss success you know gets a, a, a fantastic photo and you know much quicker than the other two also um, this is obviously some bricks embedded in the ground so I'll just zoom in quickly on all of these and they all look relatively decent you know the real me this is what you get boom in a second two seconds this is the photo that you get in um, next photo best dog in the world so it looks decent mix light looks decent real me you can see the difference of the saturation is not actually um, that the grass is not actually that green uh, this with regards to the colors I think the Fuji film pretty much nails it this is how green it was at the time and if we zoom in on all of them you know it's a bit over sharp bit over saturated maybe I prefer the Fuji film here as a photo but again the mix light doesn't do bad but you can see it, it, it can't compete with the uh, definition on the grass but as a point and shoot quick photo to take uh, you know the real me it's close to the Fuji film, so super close up here. Mix like doesn't do a bad job. Doesn't do a bad job at all. Real me again doesn't do a bad job at all. But I think this is where the Fuji film really comes into its own. I mean, it's it's a really really nice photo. It's got much more definition. It's just it's a much better picture. This this is where you can see what the Fuji film is capable of. Success is not so far behind the Fuji film camera. And the mix light is a you know a reasonably decent job also. So in conclusion, you know for the money guys, I'm I'm extremely happy with it. I do take a lot of photos of everything, and uh, you know for me the success just because it's you could just take it out of your pocket, shoot, and you know it's going to be in focus and it's going to be decent.
Maybe you can do something with the uh, taking a bit of the saturation out if you want. That budget phone, like I said, was about $100 when I bought it. The Realme 6S, uh, around $180. But um, I think you, you definitely, definitely, definitely get twice the camera. And then compared to a standalone compact camera, look, uh, the compact camera takes longer to take the shots. Maybe in some circumstances, the compact camera can take a better shot, like our super close-ups. And if you need a zoom, the zooms on uh, the, the uh, phone cameras generally are not great. Whereas the compact camera's got up at 20 zoom. So basically, I'll just go over here what I said. If you just want something, um, if, if you're someone that doesn't want a, a super expensive phone, but you want a phone that can take decent photos, can't, I, I, I recommend the 6S. So I just, here I just go over some of the other points about the phone if you're interested. Uh, with regards to the Bluetooth and the Wi Fi, I found the Wi Fi to be very strong on it. I can be a long way away from the router. I mean, outdoors um through walls and it's still picking up you know a, a workable signal whereas even um, a laptop might struggle to get the signal uh, the bluetooth seems you know fast reliable got no issues there youtube videos um yeah got no issues with them it loads them very fast yeah they, they look great maybe the screen is not as super sharp as um as oled displays the screen is decent i mean just don't expect to get blown away by the screen but the screen is decent enough. I've wrote here at the time. I was experiencing some delays between um, between web pages, um, going between videos on YouTube, but that stopped now. In the last week or two, I haven't had that at all. So I don't know if that was just something because it was new or whatever. Battery. So far, I'm really impressed with the battery. It lasts me days. Um, I don't really use the internet that much. Maybe an hour a day on it through Wi-Fi. Uh, don't really use Bluetooth to be fair, but I'm getting, you know, I must be getting three days, four days worth of use out of it. I don't see any reason why uh, if you're a heavy user, it couldn't last you a day. That's my personal opinion. I don't see it, any problems for the camera lasting a day. Uh, the selfie camera, I thought it was quite decent. I mean, uh, it's got good detail. I mean, if there's one thing I would say that maybe the focus is not even across the whole frame. But, you know, this was a, a photo that took two seconds to shoot, and uh, I think it came out relatively decent. This is what you get in the uh, with the phone. I said this at the start. Well, you know, nice box, nice packaging, I've got to say that. Gets a um, high-capacity high charger, your USB-C cable, your uh, clear uh, plastic case, and obviously the phone. So to wrap it up, a decent phone, decent camera for the price. I don't think you can go wrong. So that's the video, guys. As always, uh, thank you for watching. Like I said, this article, if you want to read it, you want to download the um, the pictures for yourselves to do the comparison, you can go to the drivetunemedia.com website and you can download the photos and do your own comparisons. Obviously, looking at it through YouTube, there uh, will be a bit of uh, compression going on. That's it, guys. Hope it helped you. Um, look after yourselves, have a happy new year, and I'll see you again next time.